So I'm on my way fishing once again. I don't know what's going on with my shoulder, but I can barely lift it. Took some Tylenol and Advil. Hopefully I can actually fish today. And try my hand at actually uh, bringing in some fish this time. Going to the same spot, I think. I brought a different rod this time. Last time I was using a pretty stiff rod. Uh, this time I'm bringing a TFO uh, Lefty Cray Series Professional 2. Um, it's a little more moderate than the rod I was using. I was using quite a stiff rod last time. Also, <laughs> a couple of you picked up, I didn't even notice until some of you said something about me not putting the line through all the guides. But, this time I have it through all the guides. Ah, uh, man. There is the river. San Juan River coming down from the dam here. We are at the top of the dam of Navajo Lake. And right down there is where we're going to be uh, fishing. Big rock hole right on the other side of that big island. As I'm coming up, I saw that a few shotgun shells here. Someone was doing a little duck hunting. Got a few seagulls flying. I don't see any duck right now. It's a little, uh, a little late in the day for duck hunting. Probably doing it this morning, maybe yesterday. Um, I'm not sure the legality of duck hunting up this way. This far up. I've done it a few miles down. I'll fly right along here like this. You'll get a couple good shots on them, for sure. So I'm coming up on big rock hole here. You see the big rock in the center. Boy, isn't this beautiful country. I've said many times, God really is the ultimate artist. Got a guy fishing already here. I might be able to get on the other side of the rock. Before I got to start fishing, I struck up a conversation with this fellow fisherman. Boy, am I glad I did. I have a brand new fly reel that just came out and a couple other fly reels, but I designed, I designed fly reels. Sweet. So did you design that rod also? No, this is not my winning rod. Yeah. This is the reel. Oh, that's a gorgeous looking reel. Yeah, it's a semi-frame design, bolt disc. Um, drag system, carbon. Sure. Uh, it's a totally sealed reel, saltwater safe. And that's that's big too, because a lot of companies will will say that it is, and then right. you dunk it, and sure enough, it's yeah. it's not. Uh, so it's all O-rings and all sealed. Uh, I've seen people try to change their drag as a fish is running, yeah. and what happens is they'd have no control over how much drag they put Me on. Me last time. That. Adjust your drag, and the fish is running away, and it gets to be too tight, and snaps them off. Yep. Well, it's uh, a it's a beautiful reel. How, how much you sell those? For? Uh, 129 dollars for the small one. This one I think is 139, okay. and the large one, um, which is uh, 179. And you can see the the quality of the machining of this is just uh, unbelievable. But it's called the Maverick. Okay. And you can get it at Qualify product. Yeah, I, I'll definitely check it out. Okay. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, thank you. What he was saying earlier is I think he uh, said that he worked for Orvis. I want to say it was Orvis. It was one of those big name brands. Um, a while back, started to make his own uh, product. So, looks like a nice reel. I might have to check that out. All right, so I'm back. Hopefully this time I actually land some. We'll see. As I walk out to my spot, I notice a trout rising right in the back side of that rock. So, I started out with a dry fly. Well, that didn't work. He just wasn't interested in my offerings, so I changed my rig to nymphing. Yeah, I hooked my back while tying on the nymph.
Okay, now ready to nymph. So it starts. No, never mind. there but I haven't found anything big so I think I'm gonna try to move to another spot might try just real quick north of this rock and see if that'll help there's nothing after a few casts I'm gonna go down and try the braids see if I can't find a little hole Yeah, nothing. Not even a one little take. So, right here, in front of this rock, is a deep trench. Right in front of it, and sometimes I see some trout. If I can just kinda get it to go right past there. Maybe, we'll see. Maybe I'll get one. Lost another really big one. So, big rock took my fish. That's a good one. Lost it again. Here, I want to show you guys why this river is kind of tough to, to fight the fish. You see these big, deep holes as you're walking. If you're underwater, it's kind of hard to see. And especially when you're fighting fish, you're not paying attention. 
That's why I generally try to stay put. Uh, that last fish, I was in just uh, some gravel up there. It ended up working out or I could walk the fish. I still lost them. But all through here, all throughout this whole river, it's this kind of bottom. So it's not something you want to start running after a fish down the river. See some guys do it. I've also seen some guys uh, fall in a deep hole, like boom. Okay. All right, so here's the problem. As you notice, I forgot my shades. So as I'm coming through the braids here, you gotta look for pockets, for holes, and for fish in them. Problem is, I don't have my stupid me left in my home. I don't have my sunglasses with polarization to be able to see through. So, it is what it is. Just gotta guess. I kinda know where some of them are. I'm gonna try a couple of them. It's a busy day on the water though. You got a lot of people fishing. So, I don't want to get in their way, but a lot of the holes are already taken, but we'll see. Got a dead duck. That was a bite. And another. I just hooked a decent size and he let go right away. And we're moving. Might be hard for you guys to see this, but there are trout moving all through this water. Problem is, this is uh, not fast enough moving for my nymphing techniques. And they're not really rising up for any dries right now, so gotta move. A little fast moving water over here might be able to try to nymph there. So I find this hole and start getting bites. By this time, my arm was really starting to hurt, but I couldn't give up. They were too small here, so I keep moving. and I lost another decent sized fish. As the day was winding down, my arm was really hurting badly and my camera batteries were starting to die. I knew this was going to be my last spot. I had to land a fish here or I was going to go home empty handed. This was a decent fish, but I was having trouble fighting him because of my arm. 
but I knew I had to land him. Right as I went to net him, I lost him. Even though my arm was in terrible pain, I decided to fish just a few more minutes in hopes of landing a fish. I hooked another fish about the same size and knew I was in for a painful fight, but I could not give up. As I got him close to net him, he ran hard. My heart sank, and I knew this was my last chance. But I decided to fish till I couldn't anymore. Every cast, my arm hurt more and more. It turns out I tore a tendon in my shoulder and probably should have rested it instead of fishing all day. guys know I plan on doing one of these videos every two weeks it's about all I can do uh, with my schedule and how long it takes to actually edit these um, filming is a day-long process editing is another full day-long process and uploading unfortunately where I live with my internet situation is an 18 hour process for uploading so yeah, it's not something I can push out once a week. I just can't. 